Hey, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 1984 cult classic film, The Muppets Take Manhattan. So this is directed by Frank Oz, which is awesome because he's Animal, he's Miss Piggy, he's Fozzie Bear, uh, Jim Henson is is uh, Kermit the Frog and others as well. So our eclectic group of Muppet friends uh, just graduate college. They have uh, this musical that Kermit wrote called Manhattan Melodies that they perform at the, at the school. And then they decide to go to... Uh, with the idea of Scooter, um, go to Broadway to sell the show to be a big Broadway hit, right? So they go to Manhattan, and it doesn't work out as they planned. As every talent who goes to Manhattan knows, unless you've been smacked in the face with, you know, the luck of the gods, um, majority have to stop. And it's a matter of, what do I do for money? And then it's a matter of, do I still find interest in this craft? Things of that nature, right? So the group questions, and there's there's a, singing and dancing and and you know various barnyard animal escapades throughout the throughout the way. It's very eighties. It's very stars of that particular time. You know, making their cameos and stuff like that. The Joan Rivers and uh, and Miss Piggy uh, perfume counter scene is still one of my favorite Muppet moments. It's just so hysterical and perfect. And I don't know how. Joan kept a straight face while doing those scenes. I mean, of course they're laughing their asses off in general, but. There's a there's a hand in a puppet. Like, you know this. But to keep the eye contact with the puppet, and I have Animal here as, as, our, uh, as our prop, you have to keep eye contact with the puppet because the puppet is real. And then you can do things together, right? Muppet dancing. It's wonderful. So Rizzo and, and the rat friends have a lot more to do. Uh, Pete's luncheonette is, is a big focal point of this as well. And it's, it's just a fun film but it's deep too it's very deep it makes you question it's like am i doing what i want to do am i doing what i'm passionate to do should i have stopped doing the thing i was passionate for in regards to i need money to survive aspect rather than stopping it because i lost passion did i stop it because i actually lost passion or did i stop it because i needed money and the passion had to be put 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 aside so questioning it's very deep I, I forgot how deep the film was i watched this a crap ton of times when i was a kid love the songs i love that kermit gets hit by the car and he loses and he gets amnesia from it thinking he's a marketer and and then you know friends figure out that he is you know kermit the frog and he's making fun of miss piggy because how could he ever be with a pig and she smacks him and knocks the memories back into him and then they perform the the show and then there's the massive big wedding production number at the end and they get married on the stage and it's cool because you have all of um the sesame street characters mixed in with the muppet characters um at, at the at this big wedding and it's cool because this was in 84 and in 87 was the tv film uh, muppet family christmas which is one of my all-time favorite christmas films uh, my fa one of my favorite Muppet films. I gotta figure out what my favorite Muppet film is. I feel like it's Muppet Treasure Island, which we haven't talked about yet, because I love Muppet Treasure Island, um, and I want to dive and calmly. I'm not gonna be calm talking about it, but love Muppet Treasure Island. But um, I I love that this was a big big thing because it was a mixing of the Sesame Street characters with the, with the Muppet characters, which is very rare and far between. And then in '87's Muppet Family Christmas, you had the Muppet characters, you had the uh, Sesame Street characters, you had the Fraggle Rock characters. So that was another massive crossover event for, for the Muppet-verse, if you will. They're all Muppets. They're all mechanical puppets. But it was nice having that together in this 84 film. It's nice having that then. Also, 85, I believe, is when uh, Frank Oz directed The Little Shop of Horrors. So he went from puppet film to puppet film. 84, Man Muppet Take Manhattan, to 85, Little Shop of Horrors, which was another incredible, incredible film. So... It's just so cool seeing how timeless these stories are. Yes, they take place in a very specific time period, right? This is very early 80s, right? Early 80s Manhattan with the stars and the starlets and, and the costuming, the technology of the time period, the cars, the taxis. The, it's all very 80s, and it's, it's neat seeing it in a raw aspect. It's not, it's not a lot of special effects to this it's just marionette puppets you know certain characters are got the little strings going on and you can if you stare you could see it but that's what i love about these muppet films i mean i love the muppets as a character 
ensemble to begin with. I love the heart and soul and staying true to creativity, that moral aspect of it, staying with your, your group. But I love the practicality of the productions because a lot of it is trick of the eye or or using very thin strings to move certain things and like how does this balance with that and what remote control can do that and it's very practical it's animatronic meets puppetry and it's so cool because it's real i can grab this character joan rivers is grabbing piggy's face and smearing lipstick on it right that's not cgi it's real it's very rare to have productions with real anymore yeah you have you know captain america with his shield right spider-man with his little web device right that's a real thing but when cap throws his shield that zooming effect is cgi when when spidey goes like and the and the web goes that's cgi it's not that's not practical webs coming out so it's 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 not a real feel to it right i'm just using those as as reference points in regards to cinematography Muppet stuff is is like real stuff. Going into the 90s films, like Muppets from Space, that had CGI to it because it's space stuff. But like, it still has that real kind of grit to it. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. Muppets feel real. And I think that's why we, we don't treat them as props. Whenever we, see, we have Kermit the Frog or Miss Piggy on a talk show or something like that, they're addressed as actual people. They're addressed, addressed of, they're not, they're these sentient creatures that we think have just been in the entertainment industry since the 1950s when Kermit was first introduced. They have stars in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Kermit has, I think, an Oscar. Like, it's a puppet. It's a puppet, but we don't acknowledge when Kermit is talking to you, interviewing you, it's, it's real. I, I, I know uh, Danny Trevea, Treveda, Trevera, he, uh, Trevejo, he, uh, he plays Machete. Like, that's the big character that he... And he's been a thousand in, uh, you know, action films as well. Love him in the third Harold and Kumar film. Hysterical. So, Danny was doing an interview. He was, he was in the 2010 Muppets movie? 2011 Muppets movie? The 2011 Muppets movie that Jason Segel wrote, uh, co-wrote. And he had a cameo and something... something. The story was something was... He was, a, he was out shooting wherever they were shooting this film. And his mom passed away and he couldn't go home to plan the funeral and stuff like the rest of his family was doing that. And he was he was on set filming this Muppet movie while his mother had passed, while his family was prepping, you know, for the funeral and stuff. And all the cast members were saying, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss. You know, you're so strong to be here, you know, stuff like that. And he was saying that he was fine, you know, up until Kermit said, I'm sorry, your mom passed away, and he lost it. And he was just crying, and he's hugging Kermit. And it's, it's, it's a, Kermit's a puppet, but he's not a puppet. He's real. And for Danny to, to tell this story, and I get, I get emotional retelling it, because it's such a real, authentic feeling. Like, you see bloopers all the time. Like, there's that Robert Williams, uh, Robin Williams blooper of him and Elmo doing stuff on Sesame Street and Elmo can't grab a stick and it's just hysterical back and forth banter between the two of them but it's improvised and it's real and I think that's what's really cool about uh, The Mandalorian currently is because Grogu is real he's a real puppet who's being controlled and Pedro Pascal was even saying that he's amazed at the uh, puppeteers because when he improvises something they'll improvise back with movements and he's just, he's, he's talking to a real Grogu. It's very interesting within this mechanical puppet aspect, within this Muppet aspect, because it gives a sense of authenticity because they're real. They're right in front of you. They're real. So to have this sentient frog talk to you and say, I'm sorry about your, here, you know, your mom passing away. And for this big tough guy with tattoos everywhere to start crying his eyes out because the green frog puppet told him he's sorry that his mom passed away. Bro, it's just, it's amazing how we as a society acknowledge the fact that these entities are real professional entertainers. That they're not just mechanical puppets, they're real entertainers. It's, it's, it's amazing. Kermit was just on The Masked Singer. 
and he was a renowned, you know, A-list celebrity. Everybody was applauding, and it's it's amazing. It's very interesting. Humanity is very interesting. We care about certain things so much that we believe it to be real, and it so it is. It's so it's so interesting how how society works around this. It's interesting how the mind works around this. I'm very curious on the psychological aspect explanation of this. There's got to be an explanation for it psychologically, why we do this, why we subconsciously do this as a culture, and that we all have this general acceptance the Muppets are real. I want to know. What are the theories on that? Anyway, 1984's Muppet Take Manhattan. Awesome film. I also love that Adam Goldberg references Muppets constantly throughout the Goldberg show, which is hysterical. Uh, Sean G. M. Brown does a perfect Adam Goldberg character. Uh, what else was fun about this? Oh, we get flashbacks to the Muppet Babies. Um, they're doing their own little, you know, Muppet Babies in their playroom song and dance in this film, which they also do in uh, Muppet Family Christmas in the 87 TV show. So it's just so cool. It's so cool. Love it, love it, love it. Love my Muppets. On to the next review. Which mahalo.